Welcome one and all to Umami Manga. I'm Petter and this is James. Hi, I'm James the Hedgehog. <laughs> oh, no. I don't know. And it was a spontaneous thought. The intrusive thoughts won. It's good. We were just talking about Sonic Sonas or whatever they're called. Yeah, yeah anyway. Called. <laughs> today we're talking about volume 16 of Jujutsu Kaisen. <laughs> a long arc has finally come to an end. And it... <laughs> wow. <laughs> Yes. Yes. Wow, indeed. I, I <sighs> Honestly, I'm a little bit speechless about just uh, the way the arc was ended, you know? Yeah, I, I am as well. I, you know, it ends so, so tragically, drastically. I mean, everything changed by mm-hmm. the end of it. Yeah. It, it's like a completely different series. Yeah, really. So many things, like so many consequences from the from this arc that right. I'm so excited to see how the character is going to deal with in this coming arc. You know, mm-hmm. or or maybe I should clarify. It feels like that the prologue has finally caught up to the main story, or vice versa. It feels like now we're now we're getting w- the consequences that happened at the very beginning of the story with with now it's like it's like we're getting all the elements of of the story are finally coming into place and we finished off the you know the the jutsu high school part (laughs) we can't really go back to that so now it's a new story almost it definitely is a massive shift for the story yeah yeah Uh, and so far i'm I'm all there for it. Like so far, I think it's off to an interesting start, uh, and it'll be yeah, very interesting to see how it's going to continue. Yeah, but let's get into the character discussions, and I want to start with someone who has been known as Noritoshi Kamo in some parts of history, uh, and who obviously has been controlling Ghetto's body now. This character in the physical book on a between chapters page he was referred to as kenjaku kenjak in the chapters themselves in the volume it, that was never mentioned in fact he even said something along the lines of just call me whatever you want kind of right uh, which i kind of took as like okay i guess this character is just maybe maybe he's not going to have like a a known name necessarily mm-hmm. uh assuming like as we know like the ghetto body isn't his and maybe Noritoshi Kamo was someone who wasn't necessarily him initially either maybe potentially I, I guess we don't know for sure either way Kenjaku was a name that he was noted as like in, in between two chapters in the physical book so I guess that's his original name Kenjaku huh yeah interesting yeah it's funny that 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 wouldn't even be mentioned in the story in the chapters itself right but a bit strange. I guess it shows that in order to get the full story, a lot of the times you need to buy these volumes. So it kind of kind of sucks for me who's <laughs> reading it on the Shonen Jump app. Right. Uh, I wish there was a better way for the digital readers to get the same sort of content as the physical readers. But I guess that does put value on the physical volumes and the the price that's on it. I a suppose. More, so okay. Uh, mm. <laughs> but yeah, uh, Kenjaku. Yeah. That's uh, I'm glad we have a name because calling yeah. him fake ghetto, ghetto or, or imposter ghetto, you know, is getting kind of tiresome. It was, and I was also considering like before I saw that between two of the chapters, I was considering calling him like Noritoshi Kamo the first or something like that. Yeah, <laughs> uh, but that that would have also been a bit of a mouthful. But yes, Kenjaku is apparently what his name is, so that is good to know. And and yeah, he was revealed. It was revealed that he. He like the old Noritoshi Kamo from history, this really evil sorcerer, like it's the same guy as the current ghetto imposter, and he has lived for at least at least like a whole millennium, supposedly, since it was mentioned he had made like some vows right. a, a millennium ago. Which is like mm-hmm. obviously that's even further back than the Noritoshi Kamo that is historically known. So supposedly he had a life long, long, long before even that. So yeah, yeah, very fascinating. Uh, absolutely, I, I, I love how, how fascinating, uh, Kenjaku has become. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, 
from a character that was just kind of in the background for at least <laughs> this part of the story right. till now being the the mastermind behind so many things. Oh yeah. Uh, I mean, I mean, not just not just what's happened with the the cursed spirits and the Shibuya arc and and things like that. Not just that, but also being the one who's behind the creation of Yuji or you know the what, what Yuji is the vessel that is Yuji mm-hmm. and and the experimentations with people being behind the 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 case of Megumi's uh, sister you know it's just this, oh yeah this guy has been for millennia just experimenting on people and pulling the strings for various for his own various means yeah precisely and all in order to Supposedly, just make it so that Jujutsu sorcerers, or or at least people with a, a lot of cursed energy, can exist. See something like that. I, I, I put it even more general in that trying to bring out the true potential of humanity. Is that too far fetched to say? Maybe not. At the very least, he 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 wants to optimize cursed energy in humans yeah and whether that means that everyone's going to be like a sorcerer straight up like maybe that's not quite the case but well like, yeah i guess we'll see i mean because he de- cause he says he doesn't really care about the sorcery part of it mm-hmm. that's why i thought it was less about the curse and more so about perfecting humanity but i guess he's Perfect. He's doing that with the curse energy, I suppose. I, I think so, but but yeah, there's a lot we don't know still. I feel like, but he's 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 fascinating. He used like after he consumed Maito in this volume, he he used the power of Maito's curse, I guess, to pull off the maximum Uzumaki technique, which the real Ghetto also used back in Jujutsu Kaisen Zero, mm-hmm. but. This time around, it was even more like a Jinji Ito reference. Like it was, it, it, it really always was. was. But like this time, like the visual, it looked it almost the exact exactly. same as almost in the Uzumaki one. book. <laughs> like, uh huh, yeah, yeah. No, there was no denying it. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. At least for me. <laughs> yeah, so that was kind of fun. Speaking of that technique, he mentions maximum mm-hmm. and how that is actually the most powerful form of of that i guess art uh, mm. or technique form whatever uh up there with the domain expansion had we have we seen this maximum version before is this the first time being mentioned uh it, it's it's possible I, I i don't know for sure actually but it's very possible that this is the first time it seems like it's a classification of of te- curse techniques maybe like cuz the first thing he says is, are you familiar with the maximum techniques? As if though it's like a brand of technique or like a series of techniques. Right, 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 right. So I guess the maximum Uzumaki technique in this case is just maybe a, just a, an, a more powerful version of the, I guess, regular Uzumaki technique. Mm. I don't know. I'm not sure, sure mm. for sure, but, but yeah. maybe. Yeah, it depends because Ghetto used it earlier you know, in, in zero. Mm-hmm. So was he using a maximum technique there or was that just a lower or lesser version of the Uzumaki? Because I think Kenjaku goes to explain that the way Geta used it was lesser spirit, combining lesser spirits and not worrying about the, or not using the higher ones. Yeah, I think that way, um, yeah. And then, but then Kenjaku had a, a change of thought. Mm-hmm. In that, oh wait, what if I were to use the higher spirits or something like that? And and that's how you get the maximum, maybe. I, uh, I yeah, I mean, anyway, possible. I, I I can't remember what they said in zero if it was maximum there as well or if it wasn't. But, uh, but but I I think that's a good theory though at least. But any but 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 anywho, you know, it, it just another fascinating facet to it, and and I'm sure it'll, you know, add another layer to, of things going forward but also explains why in the previous volume at the very end how he just wiped the floor with yuji because he was using i assume he was using these maximum techniques um oh yeah i guess yeah that's a good possibility i hadn't thought of that 
if he was using them all at the same time. Right, yeah. Could have been just other maximum techniques. Yeah, right. Yeah. Maybe. But another thing he did, which was also pretty interesting, I thought, was that he used Mahito's idle transfiguration technique. Mm -hmm. uh, well, well, first of all, he used that technique. Just, just that, that, that in and of itself was interesting because it, I guess it implies that he can use the techniques of the curses that he consumes. Yeah. I, I assume. I think that makes sense. But he was also able to use it remotely, which obviously we never saw Ma Maito use it yeah. remotely. Uh, so that's also, also I guess just shows to his incredible power. Mm. Indeed. Uh, and in doing so, he essentially released 1,000 malevolent Yuji's, <laughs> or Yuji Itadori's. Yeah, across, right? You know, across wow. Japan. On top of also awakening Megami's sister and then one other person, I guess, that he'd done something similar to. I I don't know. They, they mentioned they mentioned a lot <laughs> that he did in in that a couple three chapters or so, you know? Well he said two types of non sorcerers was that that were the targets. I don't think that I think that was like more than two people. Okay. Let me let me go back. Yeah, no, I, I, I misunderstood. So, yes, it, it was two types of people. So, yeah, so it's just going to be a lot of Yuji's, evil Yuji's running around. Right, supposedly about a thousand, uh, which means right. that, so I guess, yeah, Tsumiki Fujigura would have been one of these thousand, I guess. But there's two types. Yes. And one is more so the um junpei type precisely uh, so that's yeah. not like yuji though i wonder though if they because it says the type that was like junpei it says like the people with cursed techniques whose brains were meant to be non-sorcerers to them he made it so that they gained the capacity to use cursed techniques right and yeah you're right that doesn't that that isn't exactly really like like yuji mm-hmm but I guess at the end of the day, as you were saying, you know, it, it's not so much. I mean, yes, there's two different types, but they all are manipulated by uh, Kenjaku. So in that sense, there's a thousand, thousand manipulated souls that are like Yuji or that were also manipulated like Yuji, just two different ways. Right. Yeah. And the other type, the one that wasn't like Junpei, the people that. Kenjaku had made ingest cursed objects. Uh huh. They would be given strength as vessels. Right. So I wonder, as vessels, could like does that mean that any one of those people could hold Sukuna, potentially, just like Yuji can? I don't know. It's a good question. It's very interesting. Uh, yeah. So here's just a spontaneous theory. Does that mean that Maki would have been tampered with as well? Is that why she doesn't have the curse energy at all? Is hmm. she a, a vessel? But had she consumed the cursed objects? Oh, I don't know about that. I think she, her, her case might be different. Well, and as we've been talking about her similarity to Toji, I think they... Well, could jo Toji also be one of those people? I mean, I guess I don't know for sure. Well, anyway just interesting to to see and i'm yeah. actually kind of surprised we haven't seen any of these thousands yuji's running around yet I, I know i know it's at the very we haven't gotten very far into this next arc i, I get it but mm. i kind of expected it to play more of an impact right away but then again not only was there the yuji legion that was released but also <laughs> thousands of these curses from the Heian period. <laughs> millions, supposedly. Or million, excuse me. 10 million is, is what it was uh, stated, at, at least, I think. Um, yeah, Tokyo is in complete chaos now. Indeed. It's a sad state of affairs there. Mm-hmm. But, is there anything else on Kenjaku? Nope. Then, 
let us move on to Yuta Okotsu next. He's back, and so is Rika. Yay! This is great, and I've missed them so much, and I was very, very, very happy to see them. <laughs> Honestly, both of them. <laughs> yeah! I didn't think I'd be that happy to see Rika, <laughs> but, <laughs> but it's, uh, we're here, and they're, they're here. Yay. No, it's great. It, it's great to have him back. I mean, <laughs> I don't know if people remember, but I had said that I liked Yuta more than Yuji. Oh, yeah. Um, after watching both season one and then the movie, right? Uh, Jujutsu Kaisen Zero, but I, you know, I Yuji has definitely grown on me uh, since then, and it's been a while since we've had Utah. So I guess, you know, what have you done for me lately? But <laughs> I am so stoked to have him back, and I, I really hope that we get to see some of the qualities, and we do see that in in, in this volume a bit. Some of the qualities that I love so much in, in Zero. And, and yeah, can't wait to see more of him. Absolutely. Absolutely. And while it was great to see him again, it was, it was a bit rough to see that, or to learn that Yuta is now out to kill Yuji. Yeah. And, like, <laughs> it, it's, it's not exactly the way we would have ideally wanted to see this right. uh, meeting happen, kind of. Uh, but... Interestingly, along with that reveal that Yuta is going to kill Yuji now, there were some other things that we learned about some other new situations. And I figured I'd just go over them here because it was here that they were kind of revealed. Yeah, good point. For one, Suguru Geto is thought to be alive and is sentenced to death. <laughs> uh, which is also, which is, you know, the first strange thing here. here. Secondly... Satoru Gojo is judged guilty of the Shibuya incident, or at least partially guilty, and uh, breaking the seal on him is considered a criminal act. What the freak, man? Another really strange thing. Uh, thirdly, Masamichi Yaga, the principal in, in Tokyo, has been judged guilty of the Shibuya incident as well, and also been sentenced to death. <laughs> that is such a stretch. <laughs> uh. yeah. And lastly, Yuji Itadori has been sentenced to death, or, or rather his allowance to stay alive longer before the sentence has been revoked or whatever you want to say. Uh, and Yuta Ok Okutsu obviously is his executioner. So, yeah. just a bunch of strange things. Now, who the hell made up these rules or these things? <sighs> who said this? I, I wonder, first of all. What kind of logic is that? It, do <laughs> it doesn't make sense that they blame Gojo for the Shibuya... Yeah. I mean, it's a bunch of propaganda you know, that somebody it really made is. up for some reason. And I, it, it's a big mystery right now, I feel like. The guy that Yuta was talking to, though, had we seen that character before? Like, the guy, the old guy? I'm, I'm not familiar with him. I don't, I'm not either, I think. I, didn't, I don't think I recognized him. Right. So I wonder, could that person be somehow responsible for, for all of this? Or, I don't know. Hey, what what is that Tengen? That that was just a super spontaneous thing that just popped into my head. Uh huh. I feel like the person has some kind of tie to Jujutsu to High at the very least, right? Yeah. If that was Tengen, that was kind. Of, it's kind of a lackluster way to reveal them. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're we're not supposed to know for sure that it is, I guess. So I guess it's not True. a full reveal, regardless. But I have no clue. I I, I don't necessarily think it is Tengen. Uh, mm -hmm. But it. Yeah. Curious. Yeah, I do wonder if my theory about corruption within the school. I mean, there's always been, you know, the politics and and the corruption that Gojo had, had been complaining about, how he wanted to flip it all. Yeah. But going to my theory about potentially Skuna's people, uh, like his followers being the one to establish Jutsuhai or the, the jiu-jitsu world mm -hmm. uh could that have been it, 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 is this any credence to that where they're trying to keep gojo sealed basically right uh, oh yeah putting all the blame on him huh. now to be fair the I've, what's his name shoot the guy that that was um nanami's um his like apprentice or whatever gosh what was his name oh yeah uh ino Takuma Ino. Ino, thank you. Yeah, so he talked about how with Gojo gone, that disrupts the power within the Jujutsu world. 
So this is kind of consequences that he was talking about. Right. That one power, one side would take more power. Um, so I wonder if it, it is more of the Zenin that are taking advantage. Although I can't tell, I, I can't tell you for a fact that that old man that we saw was, is a Zenin. So that, mm. that's hard to say. It, absolutely. However, I think there is still credence to Tengen being less, or, you know, being a little bit dubious in that a character in this discussion or in this volume talks about confronting Tengen. So I, I think that does put a little bit of suspiciousness on Tengen. Uh, exactly. Precisely. <sighs> Definitely suspicious. And and these new rules or like the, the these points that were pointed out about, about Yaga and, and Gojo and and Yuji and everything. They are also super suspicious. Because I I think the may the most suspicious thing, kind of, in my opinion, is the fact that whoever announced all of this mm -hmm. has declared Ghetto alive. I don't know. I mean, maybe that's the most strange thing. Like, why would one even out like say something like that? Well, it could be because that Gojo was supposed to kill Ghetto, but if Ghetto's still alive, that means Gojo didn't do it, and then he must be in cahoots with Ooh, with Ghetto. I guess. Yeah, yeah. Now, that's fair. That's fair. It doesn't make sense why the why. Why Gojo would be sealed by the guy that he saved or was working with, like right? I you know, there's no there's no logic in this whatsoever. Though maybe that specific detail was kept away from public knowledge, perhaps. Yeah, I could see that. Mm. I could see that. But yeah, yeah, very interesting. It's it's fun with these big changes. It's it's fun. Right, right. I'm very going back to Utah real quick. Yeah, I'm very curious how strong he really is compared to let's say. Gojo or uh -huh. Skuna, you know, like, could he, can he hold his own against, against, I mean, Gojo, he's not going to be fighting Gojo anytime soon, yeah. but Skuna, like, I don't know, who would win? <laughs> uh, I, I, it seems to me that whenever a character is introduced as being really strong, they fail in comparison to the two greats. Uh, yeah. And I, f I think it, it seemed like Yuta himself even seemed to imply that he isn't as powerful as Gojo. Okay. Uh, or at least I got that feeling from the way he spoke about it. He does have more curse energy than him. He does, but he does also consume curse energy as opposed to Gojo. Yeah. So yeah. while he can last a long time, he will eventually run out if he's really pushed, I, I guess. <laughs> Which Gojo wouldn't, I guess. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But yeah, yeah. And I thought it was also interesting how I believe it was Yuji who, who sensed like the aura of him when he, when he arrived. And he, he thought it was Gojo at first, but then he was like, no, it's something creepier. <laughs> right? So that's, that's interesting, though. I mean, though. Rika, obviously. Like, he has a similar aura somehow to, to Gojo, but it's... But yeah, yeah, obviously, Rika can, 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 contributes to that. But, but still, still definitely points toward his, his power level, though. Yeah. And while it was sad to see our two boys fight, it was also very fun, kind of, to see the two of them face off with each other. Right. Like the two pro protagonists. Right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I do hope they end up seeing eye to eye at some point. but I'm sure they will, eventually, not, right? It was not a very good... <laughs> Not a very good uh, ending. <laughs> no, for, for Yuji. <laughs> not at all. Yeah, he. Yeah, that was interesting. Like he actually is ultimately stabbed by Yuta, in a way that even seemed to affect Sukuna on some level. Yeah. And he, so he's knocked out, and just, I guess Yuta just dragged him back to where Choso and uh, Naoya were, and that's where we're at. Where we're at. <laughs> but yeah, we we only waited. 15 whole volumes for this guy to return to the story. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was in, what, France? Or was it France or somewhere in Africa? Oh, I can't remember. He was somewhere, <laughs> Some though. country in mm. Africa. Right. <laughs> <laughs> at least, at, least in, <laughs> at the end of Zero. <laughs> right. Uh, 
so i mean we get that one student that or there's two students that gojo talked about being right very strong so we have one of them now and I'm, I'm, I'm still unsure about about the other one precisely the other one still seems to be an unknown uh, other than i guess his name was mentioned back then but i can't remember what it was now yeah i can't remember what it was. but uh but but yes that's also definitely someone that should be fun to see eventually yeah but is there anything else on utah Nah. Then let's move on to our other protagonist, or maybe the actual main protagonist, Yuji Itadori. I don't know anymore. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not convinced either. Are you giving off pheromones or something? <laughs> He's just the, the brother magnet. <laughs> yes. Must protect. Right. Oh, yeah. It's just that vibe. Yeah. I actually don't have anything... Or any notes on Yuji from the actual Chibia incident section? So I figured if you have any uh -huh. more, anything more there, we could go over that before we move on to the post Chibia arc part. Um. Well, I I guess I'll I'll bring this up, but it does kind of tie into what happens in the, in the next arc as well. Go for it. So we talked about Noritoshi Kamo mm. and how that was just Kenjaku, Ken, Kenjaku. Right. And so, Choso being convinced that Yuji is his brother, that would imply that Kenchaku or even Noritoshi Kamo is Yuji's father in some way. I don't, I'm not entirely sure how, how that would work. Maybe, I mean, we talked about how Kenchaku can't have been Kamo for that long. You know, he had to have changed bodies. So maybe there was a body change in there somewhere. Anyway, so when I, so when I first saw the reveal, like, in my mind, thinking... Because I'm, I'm at this point kind of convinced that Choso is right. That Yuji is his brother. Yeah. I, I, I'm pretty convinced that that's, that's the case. Same, actually. <laughs> so, to me, that means that Kenjaku must... Especially since he is the one that has been basically created Yuji as a vessel, I, I I think it just goes to show that he must be his father, well, uh, or the, right. in some in some capacity. Right, precisely, like a father in the same sense, or a parent in the same sense that that Choso thought about his parents, like he him having three parents, and yeah, and Noritoshi Kamo being one of them, or or Kenjaku technically, uh -huh. I guess, being one of the, those mm -hmm. three. But yeah, yeah, that is that is definitely very interesting. And I had some similar thoughts about how obviously having three parents is a, a unique thing, kind of a, a, a unique kind of situation. And so mm -hmm. it reminded me reminded me of when Yuji's grandpa wanted to, wanted to tell Yuji about his parents, and it mm -hmm. seemed like there was something special about about it like something spe special that he wanted to say but something specific and something like this would definitely be something specific you know true <laughs> it would have been something like that yeah so yeah yeah so you actually have three parents <laughs> <laughs> so there's a lot a lot pointing to toward this actually being the case now and it's it's fun and it's it's fun that we both also actually are actually thinking that it really is now uh it's it's twisted. It, mm -hmm. I mean, it's fun, but it's twisted. <laughs> yeah. You know, like what? Yeah. Uh, who could think of this kind of stuff, man? Uh huh. And so now, in in the times after the Shibuya incident ended, Yuji mm -hmm. is isolating himself from everyone in order to basically in order to keep everybody si safe from him, so he doesn't hurt more people the way he did or the way Sukuna did. Mm -hmm. I, I guess he's, he's wanted as well so I guess that's another reason to stay away but but yeah he is definitely isolating himself and really only has his big brother to rely on <laughs> <laughs> yeah interesting Choso calls him a demon god oh yeah he's gotten so strong right then he gets his butt spanked by Utah so it's like 
Why do you keep doing this? Like, oh, he, you just get so strong. He beats his grasshopper. Oh, he gets so strong. Gets his butt kicked by Chosa. I get. Oh, he's become a demon god. Gets his butt kicked by Yuta. Like, yeah, why do we keep doing this? I wonder. I, I wonder if that was Choso's observation based on the fact that the two of them had been fighting these cursed spirits for a few days, maybe, or just eradicating a bunch of cursed spirits in Tokyo. Uh huh. And maybe he had. Yeah, Yuji had just gotten the hang of that really well, and like to the point where it looked really good, or where he looked really powerful to Chosa. Dude, you look so cool. Right. <laughs> I give you nickname. <laughs> I don't know, maybe something like that. Uh, but Yuji isn't fully recovered yet, so that's also important to remember. So I guess once he does fully recover, he will maybe, maybe, maybe by then he will actually achieve this demon god status. <laughs> good point. Hmm. Yeah, I keep, I keep forgetting that. He's not fully recovered. I don't know what that entirely means, but right. I guess he's just still exhausted. Yeah, and he—I mean, I—I I think he, he specifically said that where he was hit by the black flash, that's where he is still kind of hurting, or he hasn't recovered uh, there specifically. Which makes sense. Black flash is obviously very powerful. I—I I got something. I, probably my final thing about Yuji, if that's okay. Yes. For sure. So it, it, it's about, and we kind of mentioned this in the Utah discussion, but Skuna is smiling. Like he kind of he kind of twitches, then he gives a smile when Yuji got stabbed. Yeah. And I thought, oh, does that mean that Skuna's going to come out to play? But then we see Utah at the end of the volume dragging Yuji's body around. And maybe it's just a delayed reaction that he's going to come out fairly soon. But I don't know. Like, what was what what was the deal with that smile? It, is uh-huh. Megumi nearby, and he's just like, "Ooh, <laughs> my my boy fancy," you know? Like, I, I don't know. Ah, uh, yeah, right. It was definitely strange because, like, the initial reaction that we got from Sukuna definitely seemed like he took damage just the same way Yuji did from that stab. Somehow, but then, yeah, then there was that smile, and that kind of made it harder to read. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm very confused about it. <laughs> Hopefully we find out in the next volume. Absolutely. Uh, very well, then. Let's jump over to Chosa next. Cool. Uh, he seems to still be adamant about saving the rest of his brothers. Uh, yes. Yes. But at the same time, being a good older brother for Yuji, the one that's right in front of him. <laughs> so appreciate that yeah right yeah he, he can focus on both things or at least be determined about about both things yeah uh there's there's still the origin you know how much are they related actually uh is it a brother from another mother a brother from another curse like what's uh, exactly what's the actual relationship but... yeah i my i actually i had some thoughts on that actually where about Ooh. well i I get the feeling that Yuji is from this era. Yeah. I guess yeah. I guess it he doesn't necessarily have to be, but that's my that's the feeling I I, I got. Uh mm-hmm. And obviously the the other nine death painting wombs are not exactly from this era. Mm-hmm. And so if 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 it is the case that they are from different eras and whatnot, then yeah, they would have not all the same parents, but but Kenjaku would be a parent to both of them. Mhm. But I, I thought it was really nice, actually, to, to, to get the reason why Choso thinks that Yuji is his brother. To understand that, oh, yeah. you know, tied to his curse technique it comes this ability for him to, to sense when his brothers or when his siblings, I guess, go through changes, or however it was put. Tra- yeah, transformations. Uh, transformations, yes, thank you. Uh, and how, I guess, being near death as Yuji was back when this started, that gave off similar signals, kind of. So it, it, it's, it's good to have, actually, an, an explanation to why Chosu started feeling this way to begin with. Yeah. And I'm starting to really like this character. I think he's kind of cute. <laughs> it's like, please call me brother just once, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I agree with you. I, I, I'm liking him, too. He, he's becoming, instead of just being kind of this cold uh silent type he's mm. suddenly becoming this endearing brotherly 
type person. Yeah. And who actually has some pretty good philosophies. I, right. I love when he was talking with the scumbag <laughs> uh, Zenin guy yeah. that I must walk ahead of my little brothers. That's why I'm strong. It's like, wow, I like this guy. Yeah. You know? Absolutely. He's amazing. That whole mindset. Mm-hmm. So wholesome. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. And, and on top of that, he's also very understanding of like, like, for example, obviously Yuji killed his other two brothers, but he, he, he doesn't, he's not upset about that. He, he understands that it was a misunderstanding and, and all that. And, and he's, he's a loyal brother. Like he's, yeah, I really appreciate this character so far, like right now. And he's a sensitive guy or a sensitive boom, whatever. Like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he's good. But anything else on Choso? I I just hope he's not dead. Same. I mean, he he could take like one hit to the head from Utah, right? I'm. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm curious. Yeah, I'm curious. Uh, would Utah just straight up kill him, or would he? Yeah, just just a hit in the head, and that's it. You know. Exactly. Utah kind of seems pretty ruthless and lawful good type of thing you know not giving much mercy <laughs> mm. well we'll see i mean i i, I can't see them ki- killing off chosa already like i really uh, hope not yeah i also really hope not <laughs> very well then let's talk about naoya zenin next maki's and mai's cousin apparently oh he's the cousin oh he thought he would be- become the next head of the Zenian clan. He was kind of prepared for that. <laughs> but learning then <laughs> that, as now Na- Nobita had stated in his will, that if Gojo is dead or in- incapacitated, then Megumi Fushiguro will become the next head of the family. So, of course, now I wants to kill Megumi now. Megumi was nowhere to be seen in this book, though. Yeah, no, he wasn't. A- out of curiosity, where did it say that they were his cousins? Um, it was a little bit later. It wasn't, like, it wasn't in his introduction. Oh, it wasn't. Oh, okay. Because I was really trying to trying to understand the relationship of everybody. Mm. Because now Obito's supposed to be the head of the family. Well, he was. He's dead. But mm. who are his sons? Naya is definitely a son, right? Yeah, I've, I've, he should be. But wasn't? But was Maki and Mai his daughters? If they're cousins, then they wouldn't be. Well, cousins, no, no, they wouldn't be. Uh, oh yeah, here it says. Um, oh okay, thank you. After Yuta ap- appears, like like it, like initially it's just uh, Yuji, Choso, and Naoya, and then and then Yuta appears. After that, pretty shortly after, yeah, like like two pages after he jumps down to them and like stands with them. Uh uh-huh. Something like that. He says, or Naoya says, "I'm Naoya." Zenin, Maki's cousin. I'm also here to kill Itadori. Interesting. Yep. So, okay. So, yeah, that means, yeah, Naobito was definitely not the father. Maki is Mai's father, but... Mm-hmm. I am curious, you know, Jinichi, it's mentioned, when he's brought up by Naoya, Toji is also kind of brought up, too. Uh, right. Mm-hmm. So, is Toji... I don't know, what's Toji's relations to, to Naya and even Naobito that by adopting Megumi, he can become the leader of the, of the clan? You know? Right. I, <laughs> I, is, it, is it his grandson? Is Toji actually uh, one of Naoya's brothers? Or is it a, an uncle situation? I, I don't know. Anyway, it, it, I really wish it was kind of detailed a little bit more. Fair. So that we can understand it. Gotcha. But maybe that's just coming in time. Hopefully. <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah, I feel like there, yeah, there definitely, sadly, isn't enough information for us, information for us to, to make sense of this right now. <laughs> mm-hmm. Just a bunch of people with the last name Zenin and uh, <laughs> not a lot of clear connections. Super clear. Right, right. But Naoya Zenin, anyway, is very, very fast, as we see when he confronts Yuji and Chozo. Seems to have a similar power as his father, right? 
Uh, oh yeah, precisely. Uh, definitely looks very much like that. Something about 24 f FPS or whatever. <laughs> right, right. But based on the way he spoke uh, in some of the scenes, it seemed like, or at least in his introduction scene, I, I believe it was, uh, it seemed like both Maki and Naobito survived in Shibuya, but that they were both left in critical condition afterward. Obviously, we know Naobito ended up dying. Yeah. So Maki's status is still unknown, I guess, to some extent. Except it seems like she is alive, but in very, very, very bad shape. That that's yeah. what it seemed like based on how we talked about her. But I, I yeah, I mean, I think she will live. You can't keep prolonging it like this and, and <laughs> no. just have her. Oh no, she died. Like what? No. What's the point? Yeah, right. Exactly. That would be so anticlimactic in a way that I don't think, I don't think Akutami would do with this character. Yeah, but I, I guess we'll see. <laughs> yeah. I I hate how misogynistic now i mean it, it's obnoxious level mm -hmm. uh, we, we've we've read some manga in our uh, umami manga selection that that has dealt with some pretty bad patriarch <laughs> that one but this one's pretty bad too <laughs> absolutely yeah yeah like it's up there the comments he made mm -hmm. he's a jerk it says actually because basically every bit or almost every between chapters page in the physical volume for this one has like an illustration of a character and their name. Uh, that that that's how I knew um, Kenjaku. Uh, Kenjaku's name, yeah. And uh, so the Naoya page has a, an illustration of him, his name, and that's that that's basically what it was for all of the other characters, just an illustration and the name. But in this one, it also has a, a very brief text saying. Uh, one year younger than Gojo and a complete jerk. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's his description, I guess. That's all he deserves. <laughs> yeah. But anything else on Naoya? No. Then let's move on to Yuki Tsukumo. Yes. So she appeared again. And finally. And apparently she's in league with this guy Larue or Larue or yeah. whatever. Yeah. The guy with the heart shaped nipples, right? Right, right. So that's very interesting to find out. Yeah, I mean, we still don't know what, but she, yeah, she calls him by name, and she also has comrades. Like, there's there's other people around her that are, are supporting her, or she's working with. So mm -hmm. very curious to see what her, what her comrades are, what what her allies are. Right. What is that group? If like, mm -hmm. yeah, who are they? <laughs> but Yuki stands basically seems to be that humans should break away from cursed energy, uh, which, yeah. which completely goes, it goes against Kenjaku's stance, being that humans should optimize cursed energy. Mm. And we learned through, through Yuki in that scene that apparently Tengen's barrier somehow is necessary for humans to be able to optimize cursed energy. Uh, so like, and because of that kind of, more or less, only Japan has Jujutsu Sorcerers and Cursed Spirits, which was a pretty big mm -hmm. reveal or, or, or like kind of information drop, mm -hmm. I thought, because I had only assumed prior to this that just everywhere in the world there were Jujutsu Sorcerers and things like this going on, but apparently not. I mean, I guess there's, there's still enough because we do have at least one foreign guy, right? Uh, true, did. right. So there still is a little bit, but it's mainly in Japan. I wonder, though... In his case, for example, maybe he spent a lot of time in Japan, maybe as a kid or something. I don't know exactly, but there could be explanations like that that we just don't know, perhaps. Beats me. Then why was Utah all the way in wherever he's from? What was the point? <sighs> Good question. <laughs> yeah, m maybe some Japanese curse user went to a different country and started causing bad shit. And they needed to send somebody after him or something. I, I, I don't know. I'm just trying to come up with things to justify this. <laughs> um, but the, I think the reason why I find this reveal so interesting is that it seems to imply that Tengen is somehow the source, or at the very least, one very major source of cursed energy in the world. Mm -hmm. Like, maybe even the only source. I, I'm not entirely sure. But basically, his, his barrier has this effect on people that are nearby, or at least in, within Japan. 
so I wonder then if Tengen would cease to exist somehow, if it would die or whatever. Would Cursed Energy eventually vanish from the world as well? Completely? Interesting. Interesting. I mean, you know, that would that would be that would be a very interesting reveal. <laughs> Sorry, I can't think of anything other than interesting. But no, I, I, I like that that all that, that would mean that both sides would want to keep Tengen still around in that obviously Skuna's side is gonna want the curse energy, mm-hmm. but also the Juice of Sorcerers, because that was makes them special. You know? So I could see them yeah, both just kind of wanting to prolong Tengen and, and for their own means. And then I would take somebody, a third party like uh, Yuki here to get involved and, and put us into it. Right. Right. Ooh, I wonder... Hmm. I wonder now that it seems like we... Obviously, we don't know for sure, but it seems like there's at least a decent possibility that the story is turning away from Jujutsu High now, to some extent. Then... Is this group maybe where kind of we'll find our new protagonist group? Maybe like not only them as they are now, but maybe also some of our some of our characters from before joining that group and kind of joining their side mm. uh, or their cause. Mm-hmm. That could be interesting, I think. Yeah, I agree. I agree. But uh, anyway, um, about Yuki Tsukimo, she did also appear briefly. Uh, after the Shibuya incident, uh, just on on a page and a half or something, uh, and she was she she seemed to be talking to somebody, and she declared that she will confront Tengen. So right, yeah, that's very yeah very interesting. <laughs> right, I think it makes more sense now in this context with that Tengen's the one that is, has this barrier that optimizes the curse energy for Japan specifically. So. And let's not forget that Tengen did sub- come to Japan, or at least start, around the Heian period. Right. Which has already been mentioned. So there is that connection as well. For sure. Yeah, yeah. A lot of things are starting to... Or like the, we, We're starting to see a lot more connections and ties between various kind of plot things. Yeah. Um, but I'm so eager to to see Tengen in the story like properly, right? So yeah, that, yeah that's gonna be huge. That cannot come soon enough. <laughs> As to who Yuki could be talking to, I honestly wasn't sure at first, but I, I do wonder if it was just Yuji. Um, oh, because it does kind of it does transition to Yuji sitting by himself. That's true. You know, hmm. asking like, "What are you going to do?" And then he talks with uh, Choso about what he's going to do, which is taking out the cursed spirits in Tokyo. Mm-hmm. So, I don't know. But it would be more inter- It would be probably even more interesting if she was talking to somebody else entirely. But that was only the only person I could think that would fit the bill at that, at that point. Gotcha. Yeah, I wonder. I wonder. I mean, it would be interesting too. I, I hadn't considered you, uh, Yuji at all, actually, as someone that she could have been talking to. But I think that could be interesting because maybe that could give way for for him to eventually join her people. Sure. Anything else on Yuki? I do not think so. Alrighty, then let's move on to some smaller characters. Let's talk about Ura Ume. Okay. We see this character use very powerful ice techniques yeah and also having a very high level uh reverse curse technique Mm. which actually got me thinking or wondering i guess if good because some somebody remarked that it was a very high level reverse curse technique uh with how Mm -hmm. it was healing their hand and so i wonder if that might be how Ume is staying alive for like unnaturally long is just because the the curse the reverse curse technique is just so powerful that Uraume can stay young and not die of old age because we know obviously that Uraume does have an extended lifespan right and, it has to and different characters have i guess different ways to have such long lifespans like obviously uh Kenjaku has his way and and even Tengen has 
his way. Although Tengen's and and Kendrick's ways are not all that different, to be fair. Oh yeah, good. Point. Actually, but either way, that wasn't my point. Uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> maybe this good side point. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> maybe this is Uraima's way. Yeah, just having an like incredible reverse curse technique that just prevents aging. I really like that. Yeah, she's able to, or they are able to stop because I gender is unknown. It, it, I believe so. Yeah, but they have to be really old and. But but they definitely have that powerful reverse technique, and I, I think that yeah that could definitely be it. That's that's a great idea. But yeah, uh, anything else on Iroyume? They know uh, Kenjaku, meaning that they're not strangers. They mm-hmm. they seem to have known each other for a while. You know. Yes. Like they're definitely in on each other's plan. Absolutely, yeah. Right. Re- reinforcing the fact that th- they are in the Skuna camp absolutely that's it then let's talk about kazumi miwa a little bit she was pretty prepared to put everything on the line when she came up <sighs> in very close combat with uh with kenjaku but nothing <laughs> but yeah <laughs> i mean she would have probably possibly died if it wasn't for kusakabe's intervention yeah yeah he could take the or he could not maybe not take it, but he could, he could block that Uzumaki technique, I guess. Yeah. Which obviously points to him being very, very, very powerful. Powerful, as I think Mei Mei had uh, pointed out at some point that him being very powerful. Yeah. And similar to Yuji in some ways. Yeah, I believe because he doesn't even have a technique. That's what it was, right? I, I think, yeah, yeah. right. Mm. So that, yeah, yeah. Interesting stuff. Obviously pretty minor here i guess but well you know not just miwa but the entire kyoto school or high w- mm. had come to save them true not that they really did too much but i guess they did <laughs> enough yeah it was fun to see them there I- i'm glad they made it before everything was completely over you know <laughs> right right no no I-, I i'm glad as well um not just for yuji's sakes but also for the memory of mikamaru mm-hmm. kokichi absolutely but now they seem to ha- be in the the care of Yuki's group in some way, so I, I'm I'm assuming they're fine. Yeah. Somehow. <laughs> yeah, it, Yuki um, mentions that they they've been taken away. Right. That they, they, they're protected. Right. I'm just very, I guess, eager to find out everybody's statuses right now after the whole Shibi arc has ended. Because there's a lot of characters sure. that we don't necessarily know completely. What's up, right? Well, hey, I'll tell you one that I was shocked to see. Uh huh. Inumaki. Oh yeah. Bro lost an arm. Yeah, right. What? I assume that happened when Sukuna did his domain expansion. Yeah. Right. That's what I'm thinking too. Must have been right. So that's that's pretty sad. Mm hmm. But yeah, I don't actually have anything else on any specific character. Uh, well, speaking of other characters that we just wanted the status of, uh-huh. Nobata, like, oh well, you know, <laughs> she was practically on her deathbed, right? You know what? Yeah. Where is she? I, I guess maybe the Yuki group again took took her as well, but just need to know these things. We do, we do need to know these things. Oh. that's it. All right, then. Moving into the last bit. What do you got for predictions? Okay, so I really do think eventually Utah and Yuji have to see eye to eye, right? Like, the two protagonists protagon- have to work together. They can't just kill the other, right? No, no way. No way. I, and, and the way that Utah still talks about Gojo in a kind of a respectable way uh-huh. and not like he's talking about a traitor precisely as jujitsu world would be talking about him. Uh huh. Um, it, it does make me believe that there is some sort of reasoning to be had with this, with this situation may potentially. Yeah. I, I, I absolutely agree. It, it'll, it'll be fine. They just need to get over this little <laughs> current 
hurdle. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but speaking of of that whole event, I guess, with Yuji having been stabbed and currently seemingly unconscious, I had the thought. I mean, obviously, I I don't think Yuji is dead. I, I I believe I believe he's alive and everything. But I had the thought that what if he actually was dead or. Or, or even if he's not dead now, like, what if he dies a premature death before having consumed all the fingers and whatnot? Mm-hmm. Supposedly, now, after the idol transfiguration that, that Kenjaku performed, there may exist other people, or a lot, a lot more people in the world, or in Japan at the very least, who could can consume Sukuna fingers instead. So, like, the mission can still continue even without Yuji, potentially, at this point. Maybe. But here's my thing about that. Is that, don't they have to consume the finger in order to be a vessel? Now, maybe mm-hmm. there are maybe there are more fingers out there, but, I mean, if they have consumed it, then that means that they can't get all 20 fingers, right? So, I, don't, so don't you have to have, the, have eaten the fingers in order to be a vessel? Right. But I, at least the way I understood it was that the idol transfiguration made it so that more people became possible to become vessels, as opposed to before mm-hmm. when they would have probably died immediately if they had consumed one, but now they could hold them the same way Yuji could, can. Okay. But is it specifically vessels for a skuna, and not just vessels for other specific uh, curses? Exactly, right. It, it only said vessels, so it definitely isn't super clear it may just be general mm-hmm. vessels for lesser cursed spirits and or whatnot mm-hmm. but in case it does even apply for sukuna fingers then it could be interesting to see potentially other humans having consumed sukuna fingers or, or maybe just one other human having consumed one or two fingers or something uh, mm. and see what kind of effect that would have would that person also i mean it, supposedly that other person would then also have sukuna within them and then Sukuna mm-hmm. could maybe, if he took control of both bodies at the same same time, could he do that? Potentially be in two places at once. I don't know. That'd be interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But yeah, just some spur of the moment speculation here. <laughs> sure. Sure. Mm. Yeah, I, I'm hoping we do see the consequences of the thousand Yuji's running around. Yes. You know, for sure. I I, I honestly expect to see it sooner. But uh-huh. I, again, it's only like one volume. <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, that's a a good prediction, I think. Yeah, and, and even though I I said all of this, like maybe someone could replace Yuji or whatever, I don't actually think he's gonna die uh, until I guess the end of the story. Yeah, right. I mean, <laughs> blah. Blah. <laughs> you know, with. These near deaths that we have, and also deaths that we got, it it, uh, it, it is it does seem that we are getting pretty pretty bleak here. But uh-huh. Yuji's still alive, you know. Uh, Megumi is still out there, so we still have some main characters that are still kicking it. But mm-hmm. man, it it's a depressing time. But I'm but I'm loving it. I I, <laughs> I, I I'm loving where we're at. Yeah. Yeah, it's fun. And as I said before, I think this change of pace has great potential for something different and exciting. Right. Right. Yeah, I'm not expecting a whole lot of funny moments anymore. Oh, yeah, 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 <laughs> or definitely. Or, like, playing baseball, you know? I, I'm not expecting that. I mean, one of the funniest <laughs> characters, Nobara, has maybe died. <laughs> it's like... Uh, <laughs> it's true. <laughs> It's true. Uh, but uh, sp- speaking of that, Toto, you know, oh, yeah. is he okay? I, right. I mean, Yuki mentioned that her group of comrades got, got Aoi yeah. uh, and took him away. But, you know, what's, what's his future? What's his status? Like, I, mm-hmm. there's, just, there's so many unknowns here that... Yeah. I hope we get revealed, and I'm sure it will be revealed as time goes on. But. For sure. Speaking of Aoi, though, like, I'm sure he'll be fine. Obviously, he, he can't clap his hands anymore. But as I think I said last time, his boogie-woogie technique is not the only thing that makes him powerful. 
he is mm. very strong even without it, I think. Fair. And uh, although I think you brought up the idea last time about him maybe getting like a prosthetic hand or something like that, which obviously yeah. maybe if I, I don't know for sure how how it would work, but maybe then his boogie boogie t- technique could work again. Uh, or something uh-huh. like that. But either way, we know that he has a history of some sort with Yuki. So seeing him especially join that group at this point in time, I think would make a lot of sense and would be fun to see those two characters interact more in present day. Indeed. I wonder if he's always been a part of the group, but, but you know. Oh, interesting At that point, he, he was still in in high school and whatnot you know so that was just his position his cover (laughs) (laughs) right i I don't know right yeah yeah that could be fun so i think final thing i wanted to ask is what are your final overall impressions of the shibuya incident arc an arc that was really hyped up by (laughs) the manga community really was yeah, and because it, it's funny, like usually I don't hear much talk necessarily as as a person who's not super invested in a fandom currently. Uh huh. I I usually don't hear much about specific arcs in in stories like that, but this yeah, this definitely was one that even if you weren't all that much into it to uh, Jujutsu Kaisen, you sort of knew about it. Like I I feel like a lot of people had heard about it. Yeah, like, just because of how much talk there was just wait to the shibuya yard i think it lived up to it it didn't exceed my expectations but it lived up to them uh, absolutely yeah uh, and it was it was a brilliant arc it was yeah long but never felt like it was dragging or anything like that and yes what it did with the characters not just introducing characters but also well ending some characters as well as <laughs> as well as changing a lot of the story no, like incredible to an incredible amount like extent yeah is brilliant i think i'm right there with you uh to even to the point where it didn't exceed my expectations but my expectations were so high that <laughs> it met them and i'm so satisfied with what we had uh great character moments great fights Great reveals. Oh my gosh. So many good reveals <laughs> in the in this arc that really uh I mean obviously left us with some more mystery and questions, but also put some closure onto some of the mysteries that that we had or questions that we had go um from the very beginning. Yeah. So I, I like that. And yeah, I, you know, we're now living in a world without Gojo. Yeah. And it's very exciting to see what this chaotic world is going to bring. Absolutely. And I think another thing that I kind of liked about this arc is that part of it was predictable, but there was also a lot that wasn't. Like, it was a good balance yeah. of predictable and non-predictable, I guess, you know? I agree. Because mm-hmm. we had more or less, we were pretty pretty confident that Goja would be sealed, you know? Yeah. For one, like, that that's something we called ahead of time. But for mm-hmm. for the state of Japan and like Tokyo especially to change as much as it did by the end of the arc, that was not something I had seen coming. No. So that was no. very funny. I, I mean, <laughs> I was even saying that oh, the only one that will die is Jogo. You know? <laughs> <laughs> the cursed spirits run away or something right. like that. <laughs> completely off. Completely yeah. off. Yeah, so that was a very fun. Very fun. Oh my gosh. Excited for the next volume. Yeah, yeah. I I will read it right after we end this recording. Same. Sweet. Very well then, let's not waste any more time. <laughs> <laughs> if you enjoy our content, you can follow us on Twitter at Umami Manga, and it would be lovely if you'd like to support us by rating our show on the podcast platforms and subscribing to our channel, Umami Manga, on YouTube. Thank you so much for listening, and we'll see you next time when we'll talk about volume 17. Bye-bye! See you later. No. <laughs> <laughs>
no. Oh, no. <laughs> I, I did not expect that reaction. <laughs> I mean, neither, actually. <laughs> that's, kind of, 